Call the meeting to order. Roll call of Alderman. Here. 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 Here.
That means that it's already been decided that case number 40 is going to be turned down. Any alderman that stays in this room for that vote, when this vote is taken, tomorrow morning I'm filing a complaint with the Attorney General's office, Lisa Madigan, for an Open Meetings Act violation. And that's a fact. Any alderman that doesn't want to be a part of this can step outside for the vote. Thank you. Next. Yes, sir. Pardon me, but I think maybe we ought to sing I'll Break the Heart. Um, my name is John Burris. I live at 1404 Lebanon Avenue. I'm here to talk about the gaming issue. We'd like it on the November ballot. Uh, actually, I don't know why we're up here since it's legal by the state, but a few of the aldermen are afraid it's going to bring some crime in, which is their, their, their feelings, their right to do so. Uh, I pay over $11,000 in property taxes at Cutters. I don't like it, but I pay it. Um, I've never asked for anything. Three years ago when I put a half million dollar addition on, I didn't have any of these aldermen come to me and say, hey, you shouldn't do that. Right now, business is as bad as it's ever been, even for me. Uh, we need the poker machines. If you don't like it, you don't play them. Tomorrow, I'll have over 500 people in my bar eating. Half of those people will be from St. Clair County, will not live in Belleville. So as far as taking a dollar out of, from the poker out of our hands and throwing it away, we're, we're taking it from the county because they've already passed it. Or if not, they will. So I just wish you'd consider bringing it to a vote for uh, November. Thank you. Next, anyone? Yes, ma'am. I'm Marilyn Newmeyer, owner of Stevie Ray's Barn Ground. Um, many of the town owners that have been that have been here in Belleville for a long, long time support Belleville. Um, a lot of them, all of them, pay sales tax to the city of Belleville. They pay, um, and they are also by their presence and their by their sales tax dollars and by the purchase of equipment for our business. Uh, we're asking you to consider us. And, and to give us a chance to, to make more money and to pay you more money by having the video gaming machines. This board can make that decision. Now, hopefully you'll go on with making the decision, but if not, put it on the November ballot and, and have it done now. Don't delay us any longer. As the other gentleman said, business is bad and it's not going to get any better if we don't do something about it. Uh, we're not asking for anything more than the rest of the state has got. We're not asking for people to come in here and ruin the city. I don't think it's going to ruin the city. But we support Belleville with our sales tax. And we wish you to support us. Thank you. Anyone else this evening would like to speak? Yes, sir. Hi everybody, my name is Scott. I live at 313 East Main Street. Actually, that's where my business is at. Um, so I always use that address. I'm at 313 East Main Street and I sell cheeseburgers, beer, and chicken wings, okay? I don't want to be a casino. Um, I don't want boats. After hearing this guy, I don't know how any of you would want to be an alderman or a mayor. You're only going to get second guessed forever. As far as the gaming goes, I would like the alderman to put it in their hands and just vote yes. I heard it going to a referendum in April. Um, I don't understand the April thing. Um, I don't even understand why we go to a referendum in November. Obviously, November is where most people are going to be voting. It's a presidential election. A lot of seats up for grabs. Your guys' seats are up for grabs. I don't know why we would wait till April when we can do it in November, but I clearly don't understand why we would wait till November when we can just do it now. It's an invisible money stream. You all know that we need the money. I'll give you an example. I heard this gentleman out there announce he's running for mayor. I heard Phil's running for mayor, Phil Elmore. If you guys get elected mayor, you're going to end up wanting the gaming because you're going to need the revenues just like this current group needs the revenues. Gaming is invisible. It's inevitable. It's going to be in every tavern, every place, everywhere, but we're wanting to wait. Waiting only means we're going to be missing more dollars. It's, there's no way around it. 
I know a lot of the people that were at the meeting last week, they probably had rotary phones 20 years ago. I saw three of these ladies turning off their cell phones to be polite, okay? They went from a rotary phone to a cell phone, okay? Times have changed. We need the revenue. I'm not a greedy businessman. I'm probably <coughs> gonna have two machines when I can have five. I wanna sell cheeseburgers. I wanna sell more cheeseburgers, okay? But the city, the police, everybody needs the revenue and it is absolutely, absolutely invisible to everybody unless you don't wanna see it. Don't come in, okay? But the, we all need the money. It's gonna happen in time, so just accept it and embrace it, please, okay? Thank you. Anyone else this evening? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm Keith Shell, 55, Block Lee, Belleville. Uh, yeah, you know, this is a, the nice thing about living in our country is we do have choices. Everybody has a choice right now. Gambling is legal in the state. We have a choice to go down to the casino queen, spend our money. It doesn't, matter, doesn't mean everybody agrees with it, but you have a choice. A lot of revenue from our area is going to East St. Louis. Where would East St. Louis be without that revenue, for one thing, if it's really helped them? Has it caused an increase in crime directly related to casinos? I don't think so. I mean, there, there are problems there for other reasons. If all of a sudden we have gambling in our city and it is a problem, we eliminate it. I know there's a fear. Well, it's a fear of the unknown. We all, I, mean, I don't know of anybody that wants to see anything negative happen to Belleville, especially business owners. Business owners are very, as much as anybody, invested in the city and the city's health and well-being. This isn't a matter of greed. It's a matter of business survival for some. It's a matter of a lot of new jobs for others. It's the opportunity for more revenue for the city, which could be new police officers, which we need. So there's a lot of pluses that could go along with it. If there's getting a negative, then we can opt out again. If we find that there's, I, I, I know for certain that if there was a problem with crime related to this, the city would be all over stopping. They've done a great job, as I think we've all seen, about how proactive they are in fighting crime in our city, which we're all supportive. Everybody is supportive of that. We as a business owner are very supportive of that. We don't even know, we haven't even made a decision in our business whether or not we want to do this or not. But the point is we should at least have the opportunity to, should we decide to, especially since it's legal throughout the state. Thank you. Anyone else to see? Yes, sir. Hello, Mayor Eckert and City Council. My name is Dan Ruder. I lived in Belleville for 30 years. I live in Swansea at this moment. I've been running an amusement company for about 10 years. And I just looked at some of my paperwork today. Eight years ago, I put between 40 and 60 Belleville stickers on jukeboxes, pool tables, golf machines, etc. I looked at it this year, I'm under 20. Today I did the Belleville route today for what's left of it. Be honest, if it wasn't for the online jukeboxes, there's really not any machines left to make money anymore. I'm not going to go real, real deep into it, but the biggest thing is technology is really changing. I mean, you get the new mobile phones, the kids play games for free. I mean, just things have changed from what it used to be. A couple years ago, non smoking, I lost 39% the first year. Now, just remember, Forget my 39%. The other 39% was the bar owners. They got hurt really fast. They're just now just supposed to lick the, their tears of it, just eating them up. We can't run leagues like we used to, pool leagues anymore. Honestly, the best thing that I think we could do right now, and this is just not me as better, it's the whole picture. The new VGTs, which we all know what they are, gambling is out everywhere. You've got bingo, lotto, scratchers. This is legal. We've waited years for this. It's regulated. Honestly, this is just how I feel what this is. This isn't a marriage. Let's give it a try. If it doesn't work, we can always pull the machines out and say, you know what? It actually was a problem. I don't think there'd be problems with that. 
Thank you very much for the time. Thank you. Yes, sir, in the back. Good evening. Uh, yes, I'm for video book. Bobby Menard, 23 old Wendy Spain, Chauncey's. Uh, I have a bus company in town here also. The video poker started way back in the Edgar administration. It kept going on. We finally got it. We worked hard. I'm also a member of the Illinois Licensed Beverage Association. We're a very good organization. We're throughout the state. We kind of watch our bars, police them, try to help the people, try to do a good job. We pay a lot of money in taxes, but Lucky's Place that was mentioned coming into town, it looks to me like they went gambling parlors. We're not for that. Our members aren't for that. The council should not be for that. If you've been here three years, five years, whatever, I've been here over 20. But if you're there that long, I think we've established that we're good bar owners, restaurant owners, and we do a good job. And we pay our dues. I'm not for these gambling places just jump into town to make money, multi-billion dollar places. That's not what it's about. Those people are new, they're trying to make money gambling. We want to make money gambling. We're responsible bar and restaurant owners. We pay more for our license than anybody around. We pay for all of that. We also pay for all the machines that are in there. Also, here's one you don't know. BMI, CSAP, and ASCAP. You got any kind of music at all, we pay it all them too. We pay out a lot of money that a lot of places don't. You can open up a clothing store down the street, they don't hardly pay anything. But I've never seen a problem with video gaming. All the machines that were in town before and out of town, I have never seen a problem. You have to take into consideration responsible people. And that's what we are. We're not pretty outsiders coming in open gambling parks. So maybe the council ought to get together and make some kind of ordinance or whatever. If you've been here so many years, you qualify for this. The outsiders coming in just opening up, I think it's wrong. Thank you very much. Anyone else this evening like to speak? Hearing, yes sir. Hi, my name's Ray McCord. I live at 500 Leather Avenue. I've been a resident in the city for over 30 years. Uh, I've come before this honorable council. Uh, on the matter of the proposed crime-free housing ordinance, I've read it, so I struggle to determine exactly what the problem is that uh, the proposal aims to address. Uh, I ask myself if it's actually about crime, or uh, perhaps unseemly and mystery and acts. Is it the need for the removal or undesirable persons from the proximity of our considerably better selves? Or maybe it's the overriding need to cast down judgment upon others, while a topic of our needs moral authority we <coughs> appear to sit upon. Regardless, I'd like to commend the directors of this bill for realizing that the citizens of this fine city have absolutely no need for courts, juries, evidence, or anything else in order to determine the guilt of a person for any offense, whether lawful or not. No. No, we need merely look upon them to know their guilt after, of course, attending a seminar and paying the city a bunch of money. Indeed, with this new ordinance in place, we will soon be able to simply pick and choose with impunity to whom we shall rent. It's like a sundown law, but we won't call it that because then we run into legal problems. Uh, for, for now on, we can just uh, merely suspect that a person may be involved in something unseemly, whether lawful or not, like obscenity or gambling. <clears throat> I'm interested in trying my hand at that video book, by the way. So it'll mean that I'll never be able to walk into an apartment building in Belleville again if this ordinance is passed. Anyway, we can deny such lowly persons their basic uh, need for shelter for whatever reason we want, and we can blame it on the risk that we've committed, they may have committed a crime at some point. It'll be glorious. It'll be just like going back to before the Civil Rights Act. I must say I had no idea how progressive and enlightened our city had become. 
And to think we're doing this in all kinds of cities all across America. It's harping. Before you know it, the whole country will be crime free. It makes me wonder why nobody ever thought of it before. No, I can't seem to find anywhere in there if this ordinance somehow takes care of the issues with all the old stock buildings and the, lets us bulldoze all of those evil, evil rental units and gets rid of the, you know, kinds of people you wouldn't want to live next to. They all in one fell swoop will then color me impressed. I just hope our police department is able to enforce it. Seeing as I've been unable to enforce whatever existing means of abatement that was referenced in the bill, at least uh, without the money, bill extracts from our uh, obviously bulging pockets. Well, that the computer system, which will be paid for by this bill, no doubt, to do the police work for them, and the usurpation of the power that comes along with licensure, and of course the raping of private contracts by government mandated clauses, and the impetuous hordes of brown shirts spying on each other, looking for that boogeyman. We are going to appoint a task force, sir, and we're going to continue to, to deal with this, okay? Yes, I understand. Okay. I think we, we, we've got a, we got a lot of the agenda tonight, so if you could, you have a, over four, almost four minutes, okay? All right. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, I'm also excited that everybody gets to pay more rent, especially in this economy. That's a nice folks. <laughs> Anybody else this evening would like to address? Yes, sir. <laughs> video gaming. 
It's only going to be five machines at a maximum per location. All the rules are set up online. The estimated, there's two or three different estimates of value that the city of Belleville will, will receive. I would urge the aldermen to do their job, what they're paid to do to make the tough decisions and help the business owners of the community and the residents of Belleville in passing video gaming. If not, and if you choose to go to a referendum, please put it as soon as you can on the ballot, which would, I guess, be the November ballot, because we need to get our business plans going. We need to review our options of our businesses. Please help us if you can. Thank you. This time I'm going to close public participation and continue with the meeting. The regular uh, minutes of the regular city council meeting held July 2nd, 2012. John, I'd like to make a motion to approve the file of minutes. Second by Alderman Heisler, second by Alderman Wilkins. So, any discussion about the minutes? All in favor of approving the minutes signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We have a housing report of cash receipts to date 2012 2013. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I skipped over 20. Let's go back up, backwards here. We have, uh, do I have here a motion for paying the plains payroll Yes, Your Honor, I move to have the plains payroll discussion. Motion by Alderman Hanna, second, second, second by Alderman Heisler. Do I hear any discussion about the plains? Yes, ma'am. Um, MI 046 Thunder Maintenance, Midwest Plumbing and Backflow, LLC. Is that a motion? Under maintenance? Under maintenance, Midwest plumbing and backflow. I didn't hear the question. Is that a Belleville, the Belleville firm? Yes. Okay. Our 16th Street? Yes. Okay. Any other questions? We have a motion, we have a second. Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Lucilla. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Cole. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Graduates. Aye. 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 Martinson, Aye. Elmer, Aye. Schneider, Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Motion carries. We have a housing report for cash receipts today, 2012 2013. What's your pleasure? I move we accept the report as presented. Motion Roman, Consilla, Second Roman, High School. Any discussion? All in favor of accepting the report signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Treasurer's report, City of Belleville Funds, and Statement of Cash and Investments for 2012. What's your pleasure? Someone motion, anyone? Move that the judge's report received and filed. Motion by Alderman Elmer. Do I hear a second? Second by Alderman Meyer. Do I hear discussion? All in favor of accepting and uh, having filed for audit signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Zoning Board of Appeals advisory reports. If there's no objection, I'm to read case 3 9 and case 40 as one of the steps they apply to the same. Uh, no, uh, let's read it separately, Jerry, please. Mouse products. Each variance in order to utilize one side of the duplex as an office, as an office and one side as a residence. The zoning board recommended the approval. Make a motion to comply with the zoning board's recommendation and proper ordinance drawn. Motion by Alderman Meyer. Second. Second by Alderman Seibert. Discussion? All in favor of the motion to have the proper ordinance drawn signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Case 40. Case 40. Parties, auto sports, and ATVs. Use variance in order to operate a recycling center for metal, electronics, cardboard, plastic, and the like. This uh, resides in. Uh, Ward 5, uh, Alderman Silsby who is not here this evening, we have uh, conferenced on it. He has had you know, multiple uh, communications from uh, people by phone, email, and myself, as well as uh, a multitude of uh, petitions against, uh, we both uh, wanted the state that we respected. Mr. Uh, Thompson wants to get a business in there, but uh, in lieu of the uh, citizens uh, against it, I make a motion that uh, we overturn the uh, zoning board's uh, recommendation and that the application be denied. <coughs> motion for Alderman Hayden for denial. I second that motion. Second for Alderman Musgrove. That it would change the character of the neighborhood. Do we have any right. discussion? Any further discussion? 
Just a second, sir, okay? Um, Emily, are you here? Where are you? If you want to go ahead and let's, let's address the one question that was why. You know, because the fact that there was a unanimous votes if, if the city attorney can get them ready, we prepare the ordinance. Was that, was that what you? Actually, I unanimous vote. There's some more Been, we've been consistent with that for a long time. Okay. All right. Sir, it's, it's out of order, but I'm going to let you go ahead and speak. If you want to come forward quickly, I'm going to let you in fairness to you. I think you're the gentleman I talked to on the phone today. Yes, sir, I am. And, and go ahead. Uh, Mayor, City Council, uh, Barney, Barney's all the sports. What I'd ask for, just a chance, I'd like to work with the city instead of nays or no's. Let's say it work with the architect, city engineer, redesign it, maybe add on to the building, put everything inside. Instead of just saying no, you know, let's not do this. It's going to work with the city as far as moving forward, maybe some ideas with that location. As I told you today, sir, when I talked to you, I, I'm certain, we're certainly willing to look at some other sites. I, I will state to this group, one of my concerns is uh, we're, we're in a challenge right now to keep St. Elizabeth's Hospital here. I did not get St. Elizabeth's Hospital to respond to the question of how they felt. But this being a front door at St. Elizabeth's property, I have concern about um, coming back and saying that this is another concern to them. Right now, we're working hard to keep our hospital. But I would love to, as I told you today, work with you for possibly some other locations. And I, I'm not sure that this is the best use for that particular site based on what we're up against. And as Alderman Hayden said, we have heard from, and I have too, an enormous amount of neighbors who share some concerns. Sure, I understand that. Mm -hmm. Only thing I was going to present myself, the situation here, if I work with the city. We then, want to work with you. Surely, sure, yes. say that location, you know, you add a building, you put things inside. Instead of just saying, no, we don't want it, no. you can just work with I'm me. not saying we don't want, won't want you by any means. I sure. think we'd like to talk to you. Emily and I said today, we'd love to talk to you about some locations. And I think she's working on some possibilities to share with you. Great, thanks okay. a lot. Okay. <clears throat> Comment? I regret that I was not able to attend zoning. Clearly, this is a, a contentious issue. Does he already own the property? You don't own the property yet, do you, sir? Uh, no, I don't. Okay, but I, while I appreciate the sentiment behind the St. Elizabeth's, we don't let the neighbors vote on who goes to what. That, that's inappropriate. So. You know, you're, it's inappropriate to listen to the neighbors' concerns? Yeah. You know? Seriously, even the bar owners are going to come in here and tell us, no, we don't want a dance studio next door. Or, you know, whatever. We don't do it that way. I understand you're a big employer. I understand we don't want to. And I'm not speaking for St. Elizabeth. I simply said here. There was already a business there that dealt with outdoor stuff. And it's been empty for some time. Not that long. I bought stuff there. It's been quite a while. It's been quite a while. Well, over a year. Would you consider people against this Your Honor, I was elected by the people for the people. The, the people have made it very clear to me that they don't want it. It was uh, discussed briefly at a quarterly meeting that is not in the budding property <coughs> but is adjacent. They did not take a position on it, but there was also concern you know, with, with the amount of traffic it may bring in, the trucks, and especially if it's open all weekend, that's when we have our largest number of kids and our smallest and youngest number of kids. And that's point was brought to my attention as well. So we have a motion and we have a second to deny. Any other discussions? Yes, ma'am? What, what is it because of the, like you're saying, the trucks and too many people, the people don't want it? Or what is their reasoning for not wanting it? They, like they it. feel, they feel that this is zoned heavy commercial. They understand the zoning of the heavy commercial, but they also know that this is bringing in basically what is an, an industrial use, which is why the variance is needed. And they feel that this is not conducive to what they want in their neighborhood. I, I didn't get one citizen for it. 
If we have a motion, we have a second. Uh, we'll have a roll call vote if you vote yes, it's to the Okay? Aye. Mr. Fields? Eisler? Aye. Mr. Your Honor, 
If we've only got 2,000 people signed up, obviously we, we've not communicated properly. I, as an alderman, didn't even know I could sign up. Well, it's been, in, it's been in numerous newsletters. It was in several media, uh, the news media, when the story came out, and, and we talked about it at neighborhood watch meetings, et cetera. I'm not denying that some people have maybe missed it and we need to revisit it. Probably need to put it back in a newsletter, and hopefully the News Democrat will write a future story again about it. But it was talked about at the time we did Hyperreach, which has been, I don't know how many years now. This did we start in 2008? We've had four this years. is the fourth. This is the fourth year we've completed. So uh, it, it was made very clear of the limitations because of the phony infrastructure here. I understand. Uh, and we made it very clear that you know people needed to call, and we had it on the marquee, and out the firehouse to call in. We've done a lot of different things. I'm not opposed to beating that campaign some more, beating that campaign to try to get better use out of it, but until the phone infrastructure system gets done here differently in Belleville, we'll never be able to call 25,000 within a couple minutes. We just can't. Are we calling just landlines, or are we going to call you cell phones? You have a choice. People have a choice. Yeah, you can register to use either a cell phone, your home phone, or even an email. Okay. Yeah, I'm Right. On that point, let's let's say we do a successful campaign and we get 90% of the people now to sign up, so we're at, let's say, 23,000. Then what is our plan of attack since we already know that we can't reach all those people in an hour? Well, we talked about what he said, is that, and that was the discussion earlier, we're going to have to, we're going to have to make more judgments on what area of town initially would be prioritized to get the call first. Uh, tornadoes are, are uh, well, what happened in Joplin was horrible. Absolutely. They pretty much went through the whole city, and, and, and uh, if one came, you know, almost 10 miles long, it, it is a better chance that a tornado is going to hit a portion of Belleville and not the whole city. I mean, not to say it couldn't happen, but, but chances are history is showing that you might have activity in West Belleville at one time a storm. You might have a in the deep east end. You could have one in the southern end. But we're, we're working with them to better align. So if we give the customers, you know, how to, how, to, how, to, how to handle that based on, you know, the location. But up till now, we've only had 2,000, 2,500 people sign up. Now, we have used it for throughout the city on other types of things. The police department has zeroed in on several areas, but we've had a couple of unfortunate standoffs where they've had to tell people, be aware, we've got a dangerous situation. We've done it when we've had some lost children, where we've, uh, our, our missing people, where we've tried to get people's attention to the situation. We've done it just like an Amber Alert, but we can do it over a greater period of time, and, and we can do it prioritizing in the next system, in the next area of town, that section of town. The police and fire department are very pleased with it, but certainly it's like any other piece of technology. It's hopefully always improving, and hopefully AT&T is going to improve our infrastructure here where we can handle more of the line, lines of work calls in the future. But, but um, we're not opposed to trying to beat the drum more to get more people to sign up, because we certainly have tried. But, it, but we did it this way only because um, we didn't want to give false pretense either that if we get 25,000 people to sign up, everybody's not going to get notified the way the structure is right now in just a few minutes. It's not going to happen. So what authority are you using to decide which? National Weather oh, Service. Oh, I understand. The National Weather Service is the one who issues the tornado warning. But if I'm watching Channel 5, they might be sending their little code this way, and Channel 4 might be a little off. How, how do you decide? The way it works is everybody's registered, whether you have a cell phone, email, or even a landline. It's registered by your address in the city. Sure. So you have a GIS map of where everybody is. Okay. Then when the National Weather Service issues a tornado warning, they lay that warning or that cone or that square or rectangle over that GIS map of everybody's home. Gotcha. Everybody in that particular cone or rectangle, square, those are the ones that will get a call. And, and they'll get it, whether it be, like I said, text, email, Line, whatever. The problem that we have is that the majority of the phone numbers in our community are landline phone numbers. And therefore, with the infrastructure of at and or the phone uh, service that goes to your home, the cell phones and uh, text and emails, I believe, go a lot faster. I, I just want to follow up so, with, with, you know, I, 
I, I, I just really strongly believe, and I, and I certainly understand the limitations, and, and we don't want to create a false sense of security, but I, I just want to state for the record that I think that I would rather have a system with everybody's name in it, and people being willing to opt out, even if we don't have the capabilities of reaching everybody at a given time, than have a tragedy such as Joplin, and then people find out that there's a system that could have protected them that they weren't aware of. And I just want that uh, noted. And I do support if we do anything, we should try to campaign more and get more people on the list. But I still believe that we should list these people. I, I think every time the old man and various people speak at neighborhood watch meetings, we would ask you to continue to talk about it, as but we have in the past. Some, sometimes it just comes down to people don't want to fill out a form. Uh, and some people don't, you know, they say, you know what, I listen to the news and I don't need an extra. I mean, you'd be surprised some of the. You know, we've campaigned hard. I know uh, at the time we, in the time I uh, encouraged the, the council to do this, and we interviewed and went through the whole process four or five years ago. Uh, it was amazing how many people just didn't want to buy into it, which I thought was just common sense. But well, I think we can always continue dialogue of how we can improve. Oh, well, I agree. So I appreciate the time and discussion. Okay, thank you. We're moving on now. Um, in all the facilities absence, Alderman Meyer, uh, could you please consider the following motions coming from police and fire? And if you, uh, I guess, go ahead and uh, make the first one. Oh, okay. Um, I'd like to make a motion on the West Police and Fire Committee to appoint the following members to the newly created Fire Department Board of Appeals. Design professional jury lawyer for a two-year team term, fire protection engineering professional rich lawyer, two-year team, Industrial Safety Professional, Randy Lay, three-year term. General Contractor, Ron Tangent, one-year term. General Industry or Business Representative, Dave Schmidt, one-year term. So moved. Motion by Alderman Meyer, do I hear a second? Second by Alderman Seibert, do I hear discussion? Would you explain why we're voting on this again? We didn't have the, the individuals, the members before. We voted on the, we voted on creating the, the uh, ordinance, or adopting the, uh, Code right, Chief? Yeah, Appendix A, and we voted to, to create the board, but we never voted on the particular people. Oh, okay. All right. This, this spells out the particular individuals that we're, hiring, that we're hiring, but that we're appointing to. If there ever is an appeal, now, I've been here 15 years, and I don't know if we've had anybody request one, but we should be, we should be doing this, and, 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 and so now we're following the recommendation. So, we have a motion, and we have a second. Roll call. Iceland. Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Holt? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Rodriguez? Aye. Hart? Aye. Hayden? Aye. Seibert? Aye. Martinson? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Snyder? Aye. Musgrove? Aye. Motion carries. All women marked. Um, you have police fire committee. I'd like to make a motion to not go out for bids and renew the contract with Hyperreach for three years unless canceled by written notice from either party at least 30 days prior to termination. The new contract will give us 300,000 minutes a year for $16,000 and 10 cents a minute after that. Previous contract was 160,000 minutes for $18,083 and 27 minutes after that. So much. Motion by Alderman Barr. Second. Uh, point of order. Second by Alderman Consilla. First of all, motions on the floor. Point of order, uh, Mr. Mayor. I would like, uh, this is a double motion, and I would request under Chapter 7, Section 27, Robert's Rules of Order, that it be split. You have two uh, points, and, and actually at the Police and Fire Committee meeting, it was done under separate motions. There was a motion to vote on the no-bid contract, and then there was a motion to approve the contract. And I believe that the no-bid contract uh, portion should be separated from the contract. Ms. Mayor, you agree to vote on the no-bid I'll take that in so let's go ahead and let's vote on the, uh, we have a motion and a second, first of all, to agree to vote. The motion is to uh, not to go out for bids and renew the contract, for, to act to go out for bids, okay. to, to waive the bidding procedure, I guess it's a more clear word. So we have a motion, we have a second. Roll call. Wait a minute, you didn't answer for discussion. Okay. Uh, why are we not going out for bids? How many other companies are there that perform this kind of service? We went out for bid for this. Chief, one of you guys want to just hit this? Well, at the time, there were two, three, two or three companies we did on the original. Cobrat was another one, and I don't remember the name of the This was about three at the time. And with the price coming down and the minutes getting greater, and both the police department and the fire department's feedback to, to the 
at staff meeting was they were totally satisfied with the with the program and with this particular uh, you know the way that they're they're working with them, the way we've got cooperation and the price came down. Um, we checked with Mr. Flynn and we could we could request to have a no bid and get this thing moving out. Right? And I, I understand that that was discussed at the at that uh, committee, but I still believe that we as a city council have a right to, to go out and, and, and get bids and, and prove to the people that we are trying to protect the parks, and that, that's my position. The other question I have, Your Honor, is why this didn't go before the Finance Committee. Almost all major expenditures of this nature go before the Finance Committee, and it did not. I guess because we talked about police and fire several times, it came to this committee. And it was we, we talked in police and fire about it. Was the, the first of all, it, was, it was in the budget. We had the same amount in the budget. The, the uh, $18,083 was in the budget, correct? Correct. So this contract is less than what was budgeted, and it, you know, for the same reasons I just said. So we have a motion, we have a second. Mr. I, 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 I just one last comment. I, I respect that. I respect that, but the finance committee, in my mind, the role of the finance committee is to be the last of the gatekeepers to, to protect the purse and allow the finance committee people, even if it's in the budget, and even if it's under budget, to ask the finance director where we at on cash revenue coming in, on expenditures, and how's it going to impact, and that's the role of that committee that did not happen. Mr. Hart. Uh, it is my understanding that this contract has a 30-day cancellation policy. Mm -hmm. And so with that in mind, we still have an opportunity to request bids on this contract. And if we find a company that can provide the same level of service for a lesser amount, why don't we take advantage of that? Well, you we still, still have, have, still have that right to do service. that. Another thing that's going on right now is the county's investigating uh, a county-wide system. And we made it clear, I think it was brought up in committee, that's why we double checked the getting out of this particular bid. Uh, and that was part of the reason, I think, too, with the price going down and the satisfaction level we had, waiting to see what the county might do and if that might be a cheaper offer to the city of Belleville by chance. We talked about the fact that that's some, something that we may be seeing here in the near future. We certainly, uh, you know, I would recommend that you would approve it tonight. We have a 30 day uh, written uh, notification to get out of the contract. If, if this county thing doesn't bear any fruit, and they are working on it right now as we speak, uh, we could certainly go out for bid in the meantime while we got an existing contract and we have the right to go and, and get rid of it at 30 day notice. Your Honor, I'd like to mention that this is not something brand new that we're not going out for bid. This has already been bid. It was. And it's an extension of an existing contract, which I think is different than just a brand new contract. And we're allowed to do this. We're allowed to extend the contract, especially when the price is we, we went through the bidding process before. They were the low, lowest, most responsible bidder. And now their price is even going down. Now, if there would be a red flag, and if my staff, the police chief and fire chief of their staff was saying, we have real issues with this company. I would be in, I would be encouraging or almost mandating that we still go out to bid and research this. But with the satisfaction level, the price went down, and the 30-day escape clause that we have, I don't see the harm to the that we're doing. But we got a motion on the floor. Yes, ma'am. When does the contract actually end? Uh, Chief, do you know when the actual expiration date is? I believe it's the. Uh, I think it's like the, the end of July. Yeah. It's coming real soon. It's, it's stuck up on us. So okay, but if the county is researching other options, why don't we just wait until they catch other reasons? Well, I think if we could take advantage and pay a little less, if it takes a couple months, it's not excellent. It's not, I mean, they always say it could be months. I mean, but they're working on it. Yeah. <coughs> the first motion is to, motion is to wait on the no bid contract. So we have a motion. You vote yes, you're, you're, you're supporting no bid, correct? You vote yes, you're, if you vote yes, you're supporting waiving the bidding contract, bidding procedure, okay? So yes is a vote to waive the bidding procedure. Roll call. Hi, sir. Hi. Priscilla. Hi. Meyer. Hi. Oh, no. Anderson. Hi. Graduates. Hi. Hart. No. Hayden. No. Cyber. <coughs> I'm sorry. Hi. 
Martinson. Aye. Elmore. No. Schneider. No. Musgrove. Aye. These guys have uh, go on to now. Uh, would you like the original motion? Someone want to make remake the original motion? Uh, motion to. Uh, to renew the contract to Packer Reach for three years unless canceled by written notice from either party at least, at least 30 days prior to termination. So moved. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. The question the city attorney just asked me, the ayes have eight votes there, right? Yes, we have eight, one, five. two, three, four, five votes. Yeah, okay, so, okay. Thanks for the question. Okay. okay, so we have a motion, Ms. Alderman Meyer. Who made the second? So, that can sell, all of can sell so we now have a motion to go ahead and approve this. And once again, understand that we have a 30-day option to get out of this at any given time, either party. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any additional questions? Got something new we haven't hit on? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Holt. Hill. Anderson. Aye. Rogerwitz. Aye. Hart. Aye. Sorry. Hart. Aye. You're voting aye, sir. Yes. Hayden. Aye. Cyber? Aye. Martinson? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Musgrove? Aye. Motion carries. Alderman Meyer on behalf of. Your Honor, we have the Planning Commission. I'd like to make motion to approve the improvement plans and final plaque for Silver Creek, Silver Creek Commercial Park, Silver Creek. Motion by Alderman Meyer. Do I hear a second by Alderman Martinson? Do I hear any discussion? <laughs> yes, sir. Can, can we get the staff just to give a brief explanation of this project? Emily, can you step up to the microphone here? Yeah. Um, this project is essentially a simple kind of a lot split in a way. They're forming four lots out near Silver Creek Saloon. Um, it has to go through this formal subdivision procedures for the Illinois Plat Act. Um, there's no new infrastructure or anything uh, proposed with this. It's all private improvements that were approved as part of the site plan. So this is simply a procedural kind of thing to get that lot divided into four, four separate lots. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. Do we have any additional questions? Thank you, Emily. For those of you who don't know, Emily's the Director of Economic Development. Um, roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Holt. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Rudgewood. Aye. Hart. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Cyber. Aye. Martinson. Aye. Elmore. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Motion carries. Alderman Meyer. Uh, Your Honor, on behalf of the Economic Development and Annexation Committee, I'd like to make a motion to approve a development agreement with the Abbeys for construction of the new facility at 5801 West Main Street to house a 4,300 square foot coffee shop and cafe. So second. Motion by Alderman Meyer. Who made the second? Alderman Hart. Discussion? Yes, ma'am. Uh, what are we giving? It's in your packet, isn't it? The packet? Um, Emily, you want to address it again? Bateman on sales tax, and I think there also was a. Uh, Sorry, I didn't hear that question. Emily Holstrecker, I can't spell that name. Um, yes, this, we are providing them, um, if this is approved, a rebate of 25% estimated at $4,627 annually of the incremental property taxes directly related to the improvements for five years. So that totals approximately $23,135 over a five-year period, in addition to sales tax abatement on building materials. Um, that will not apply to building materials that have already been purchased for the project. This will apply to anything else they buy. So overall, we're looking at a total um, participation at about 6 to 6.5% 6 of the total project cost. And the reason I ask is, yes, it's in our packet, but the people sitting out in the audience don't know. I think the supplemental. Excuse me, Your Honor. I've been printing up a supplement to the minutes for over a year, and it's been available on the, the stand back there for over a year. And um, it includes it. It's included. Okay, thank you. We have a motion and we have a second. Um, roll call. Heisman. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Fault. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Rogers. Aye. Hart. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Cyber. Aye. Martins. Aye. Elmer. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Motion carries.
Marius uh, Alderman Anderson. Yes, Your Honor, on behalf of the uh, Mass Assert Committee, I'd like to make a motion to approve the change order request number 16, the amount of $20,046 for air and plumbing and heating. Second, Your Honor. Motion by uh, Alderman Anderson, second by Alderman Caden. Uh, any questions about this uh, ongoing project with the wastewater treatment? Roll call. Hi, sir. Aye. Priscilla? Aye. Meyer? Aye. 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 A
Motion by Alderman Martinson, do I hear a second? Second. Second by Alderman Caden, do I hear the discussion? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Holt. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Rodgers. Aye. Hart. Aye. Caden. Aye. Cyber. Aye. Martinson. Aye. Elmore. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, one more, Alderman Martinson. Okay, move to approve the proposal from MWM. Consulting group to do the Gadsby 45 study. Second. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Martin Seven. Second. Second, Second by Alderman Meyer this time. Do we have any discussion? I would just like to hear um, a little more detail about this. Uh, Jamie, you want to step forward? This is our line of service.
communication on behalf of the September 11 Memorial Walkway of Southern Illinois requesting permission to hold a 5K run in the city on Sunday, September 9, 2012, starting at about 9 a.m., and also requesting one or two police officers available for traffic control. Uh, next, communication on behalf of Southern Illinois Street robbers requesting permission to close West Main Street from 1st to 3rd Street and 1st and 2nd Street, north and south, on Saturday, September 22, 2012, for their car show in conjunction with the Oktoberfest from 8 a.m. until 6 p.m. And last, communication from Empire Comfort System requesting permission to have the 900 block Freeburg Avenue barricaded from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. on Saturday, August 25, 2012, for their all employee family. I move to grant the request for A through B. I have Do you want all of them vote separately? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so I'm asking for a motion to approve the first one. I shall move. Motion to approve second. your communication reference to sidewalk sale by Alderman Heisler. I mean, by Alderman Kinsella, second by Alderman Heisler. Any discussion on the first one? I want a little clarification on uh, what we, do we have rules about soliciting on the sidewalks? We have, for about the last 30 years, approved the merchants to hold us a sidewalk sale, usually the last Saturday of, of July. I'd say probably going back to the first streetscape in 1975. Okay, and do we do it for religious groups, political groups? The, we've, done the for down, we've done it for our downtown merchants. Okay, so. Okay, okay. so if I see other groups out there doing something that are... Well, they're not allowed to set up on the sidewalk unless it's approved. We've always we've always given this group approval once a year. Okay, but if any other groups on the sidewalk that have not gone through this process, I mean, on the sidewalk by having mm -hmm. a wholesale outside. I mean, what what do you you got a specific question? Uh, there was a political organization that had several tables set up, and we're soliciting passersby. I think I think when you come into the political stuff, as you know. Uh, Mr. Mr. Flynn would probably agree that with the First Amendment and political the political parties with signs, we don't just like we don't get into when we have political party campaign headquarters, we don't try to enforce the sign permits and all right. that. And I think I, I pretty much it was, it was the, the sidewalk was the sidewalk. unlocked. I don't believe was it? Yeah, it's pretty wide sure sidewalk that. now. Yeah, the bump it out is. there. It is. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm just asking for clarification. Um, I, I think that you know it's going to be a case by case business. As far as the sidewalk sale goes, your particular question, it's been an annual thing for about the past 30 years. Okay? So we have a motion now for communication number A under 12. All in favor of approving this communication signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Communication B, which was just read about the, the, the uh, September 11th Memorial Walkway. We have a motion. Motion to approve. Motion by Alderman Elmore. Do I hear a second? Second. Uh, second by Alderman Anderson, do I hear discussion? Well, we're going to get to that in the next meeting. Uh, we have a motion to second to approve the second communication reference to September 11th Memorial Walkway. All in favor of that communication request signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Communications on behalf of you did read his offer. No, I thought you did. I, I lost track. Communications on behalf of Southern Illinois Street. Uh, this one here, I would ask to table this. Uh, reference to, I think we have a conflict right now. We've already gave a, given approval to the market. And I think we've got to go back and look at that. And I see Jerry nodding her head. I think we... we the double Main Street did not, uh, we didn't see this. So I'd like to take that. I'd like to ask that there be a motion to table this to the next meeting. Motion to postpone until further. Uh, well, to August, to August 6th. August 6th. Motion, we have motion by Alderman Hayden, second by Alderman Mark to postpone to August 6th for uh, some clarification of the vote. All in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The last communication is from Empire Comfort Systems requesting permission to have the 900 block of Freeburg Avenue barricaded on August 25th uh, for their 80th anniversary party, I believe it is. Do we have a motion? Be motion by Alderman Cyber, second, second by Alderman Martinson. 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 Do I hear any discussion? All in favor of this motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Petitions we have done. Resolution. I'd ask for a motion to read by title only. Resolution 39, 3109. 
So I'm going to motion by all second. Uh, Kinsella, second by who? I'll look very hard to read it by title only. All in favor of the motion to read by title only, 3109, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. A resolution. A resolution resolving that the city of Belleville request permission from IDOT to close Route 159 on November 11, 2012, <coughs> from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. for the Veterans Day celebration at the public square. I hear a motion. All in favor of approving the uh, motion to approve the resolution from IDOT to close Route 159 Ordinances. I'd ask for a motion to read Ordinance 7611 and 7612 by title only. Before we do that, can I ask for a clarification from what it was said about the charge that was brought earlier that we're violating all the meetings that we go on these now? You would only be violating Open Meetings Act if, if you had a meeting at some other time without public notice where you discussed this matter. And I don't think that it occurred, so you would not be violating any Open Meetings Act. Okay. We have a motion to read by title only those two ordinances. Do I hear somebody willing to make that motion? All right. Kinsella and second by Alderman Heisler. And that motion they just made the second it was to read by title only ordinance 7611 and 7612. All in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. A zoning ordinance regarding case number 39, June 12, about properties. And ordinance number 7612, a zoning ordinance regarding case number 41, about properties. Do I hear a motion to approve? I move we approve both these. Motion by Alderman Consilla, second by Alderman Meyer to approve ordinance number 7611 and 7612. Any discussion? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Consilla. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Holt. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Graduates. Aye. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Aye. Seibert. Aye. Martinson. Aye. Elmore. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Ordinances pass. Unfinished business. I don't know. Yes, ma'am. Can I ask you about? I'm sure you're still working on the task force to find this housing. Yes, ma'am. I, I just, you know, I got that information to me on Friday morning, and the packets had to go out. I didn't have time to contact anybody. I will have a, uh, a committee to present a task force to present at the August 6th meeting. Okay, and but you're including landlords. Um, I'm going to have a good mix of people. Okay, realtors. I am still thinking about that. Okay. I want to keep it moving and open. And sure. We'll have a very good presentation for you on August 6th. Can I ask if when you're including my loans, I know some of them own, you know, maybe hundreds of properties, but there are some that they own one or two. Can we try to get a mix of both of them? I'm, I'm going to do my best to have okay. a good mix for, for, the, for, the, for the approval. Yes, sir. You're right. Can I uh, go back to H1? Under uh, streets and grade this evening, evidently we were going to vote on eight hundred and forty-five thousand for Kimball Plaza and tip funds. And I was not at the streets and grades committee meeting, and I guess it, it's going to be tabled. Is it okay if uh, we get some explanation on? There's six where people. This tip at, there were six people at the streets and grades tonight. It was a three-three tie. The motion was to deny the bid or to not to move forward. We're going to have to uh, reevaluate our thoughts of staff tomorrow. And I mean about the TIF funds and the balance of what TIF is. It doesn't say what TIF is coming from. Uh, the TIF is, the, the, it, it actually sits, the plazas, the Kimball Park, or, or Bicentennial Park sits in TIF 16. Jamie, correct me if I'm wrong, but it is pretty much funded by TIF 3, correct? Correct. Except that almost 300000 is still from that Kimball Plaza donation. And, and, and then there's another 92,000 of reimbursement from another from another uh, uh, Metro Park grant. So uh, of the money, and this was in the budget in the um, uh, earlier this year, um, but because it you know could I was pointed out to me that we could move this forward tonight. That's why I held off, um, and that's where we're at with that. Um, I have some concerns, aren't we, um, on a time frame for that? So yes, we are. We are going to lose this grant money because. 
I don't know what it could be any specific. Well, reason as, why some, as some of you know, we've been talking about Bicentennial Park House since 2008. I know some people have expressed in recent last year or two years that they, they may not be part of Bicentennial Park. But those decisions were made by this council way before that time. And, and it is the intent, it was, it was decided at that time even that this would be a bicentennial project for the city to have for the next 200 years a, a new park. Um, we went after, well, much to our surprise, we didn't go after, we received a Kimball grant from this family, this trust, of $400,000. There is a time frame. It has to be done by the end of this year, or we could have to repay the money. Uh, we've run into some complications, and we've shared that with the council in the past. Uh, we ran into some situations with some drainage and some IDNR permits because of the watershed. Part of that had to do with the, south, uh, the 17th Street slash Belton Crossing extension. As all of you knew, we ran into some situations with some flooding with some properties. We ended up buying one of the properties because of some of the issues that were there ongoing. We were very upfront about that. This project has run into a few snags already. Um, and, and when you run into snags, it, you know, there are issues with, you know, but, but we're still on course to get this first phase, I guess it would be called, right, Debbie? Uh, trying to get it done. Uh, we're going to have to regroup. We'll talk in staff meeting tomorrow. Uh, the Parks Board, uh, and I see Ed here tonight. I mean, the Parks Board has endorsed this and embraced this uh, project, is there to say, Debbie? Uh, I know Jim would say that uh, for a long time. Uh, we did a Parks Master Plan in this city. And it was all part of this. Uh, the, the, the Bicentennial Park is, is, was decided by this council, I guess going back to 2009, uh, to be a project for the 200th anniversary. Uh, suddenly now there seems to be some opposition to parks. Um, so we'll have to go back to committee. We'll have to probably call another committee meeting. We had two people out tonight. Alderman Silsby was excused because he's on vacation. And Alderman Arlen called me this afternoon. He's in Barnes Hospital with his wife and just couldn't make it back here tonight, and I excused him. Yes. I'm not opposed to parks, Mayor. No, I'm, I'm opposed not. to the procedure that we were put through to approve this, these funds. That's what I'm opposed to. I am for parks. Okay. I agree with him, and also, we can't come up with the money or we can't make our minds up of the old YMCA. How can we start doing another project when we can't take care of the old stuff that we already have? My question was just the $845,000. i am sitting here doing some simple math. Kimball Plaza is $400,000 grant. That was four forty-five. dollars We have $300,000 in 16, is that right? Or 10 3 $375,000 was in the budget this year that you all approved for our TIF, TIF 16 slash TIF 3. $92,000, I believe, gets reimbursed by the Metro East Park Board once we, with using their funds, you have to demonstrate and then they reimburse. So that was in the budget, but what this council approved, the majority of the people approved the budget for that part of back in March, remember we did the budget, about March we approved it. And that was all talked about then, and it's been it's been a discussion of many different times. It was never trying to be hid, um, you know. It's been. I'm not a saying it was. I'm just trying to understand the math here, and where it seems like we're falling short of this eight forty five zero eight three, and I'm just asking where is it coming from if we're still a couple hundred thousand short. Well, uh, Jamie. There was also in the budget in tip two hundred fifty thousand dollars for the roadway. Right. And that was included in the budget process this year, too, and talked about when we talked about all the 17th Street roadway things. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Mr. Mayor, it was not talked about in any detail whatsoever. The plan was laid on the table upstairs tonight at 6 o'clock. That is the first time I have heard it. No. There is a big communication problem here with this administration. I had not seen that plan, and you asked me to come up with $845,000 for a parking lot and a prefab gazebo. No, that's, not, not, what, that's not with that plan, and you're selling that plan short. I didn't see a whole plan. That was all I was offered to vote on this evening. Okay. We're going to bring it back to committee, and, and you'll have another chance to, to and, and, and the plans will be available, and they've been available, and anybody, you know, there's been no problem with your parts department or any other department in getting things when you had questions. But you have to know they're there to ask for it. Well, this has been a topic on this agenda. And, and as well as at the, at the budget time and other times, it's been not hidden for a long time. 
this is a great time now to, to uh, you know, it's a great talking point for a few of you right now. We got a part that we've all approved and, and uh, for some time, and, and this council has approved. And, excuse me. And this has not been a secret, it's not been withheld, and it's been, it's been, we'll, we'll bring this back. It hasn't been briefed. Huh? We have never said, come in and I'll show you what we're well, going to do. Well, you know, you've never been shy about emails and questions before. My door is always open, and none of you have ever asked any details that I know, particularly, and, and Debbie, nobody's ever denied any. Kimball Plaza has been talked about in this park, and the partnership and what we're trying to do in that area, connecting trails, possibly working with the old uh, Belleville West Baseball Stadium and Lindenwood, and all the different things that we've had discussion about. Uh, it's been going on for years now, and we're continuing. So why did the plans just come out this evening? It's because they're going on for bid tonight. They've been talked about before. They've been available before. We've had them out at meetings before. We had public meetings about the park, about the park, the park study. Uh, we did the park study. We had Kimball Plaza when we first got to Grant. There was meetings and opportunities, and we had some some initial uh, drawings and things and, and conceptual. And, and when was it? I don't know. I mean, we've been doing this now for what? Since 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 what was Kimball originally approved of the thing? Two years ago. At least two years. So ago. before we came into office, it could have been. It could have been. Yes, you have never taken the time to brief us on that. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I have a question about the park. I sent emails to Jamie. Um, January 6th, here's one I sent, um, then I got from Tim on January 5th. And you got an answers, didn't you? But nothing was said about this, how much money we were going to spend. These were just the water studies and that. And as far as the um, meeting of the park board meeting of March 14th um, in a farm that we had to spend the $400,000 or we were going to lose this is what always comes before com the council. Okay, it's here, we gotta agree it, uh, approve it. It's always the last minute notice. We would not have known about this, and then I, how many of you got the park board meeting that the thing was going to expire? So we don't know, you have to let us know. It was in the packet, the minutes have been in every packet. I mean, we, this not is, this wasn't, because I had to ask for this. I don't know. We put the park board meetings in the packets, right? They're on the website. On, on, the, on the website. On the website, not in the packet. No, I don't. This is, uh, I'm sorry. I'm not going to get into an argument here. We're going to take it back. We're, whether we call a special meeting or whatever, we will revisit this, and we will uh, be ready to discuss it. <coughs> Plans and stuff that are made available. Uh, you can certainly contact uh, the parks department if you'd like to have uh, a more of a review, we can so do it. But this is a project that this council endorsed some time ago, and, and uh, it'd be a shame to lose the funding or, or, or lose the, the vision of this park. Okay, so we're moving on. Does that answer your question for now, Lerman? Yes. Okay, I kind of lost track here again. We are, uh, we actually were over on item A. Item A. We're back to Alderman Hayden's request to discuss the attorneys. Yes, sir. Of course. At the last uh, city council meeting, I was brought to my attention that we, we get various uh, attorney reports. Um, I would like to see these 166 cases. I don't care what kind of case they are. Uh, you want to see, so every time the police department writes on the city offense, you want to see a list of them? I want to see the current 166 cases that was discussed at the last meeting that are out there, what kind of cases, if they're housing police or what, to see what type they are, when they were filed, how long and if they've been continued, and from there, once I see them, I'll, I'll make a determination of what uh, further overview that I would like, but yes, I would like to see these cases, so and I believe I have a right to see them. That's all I'm asking. Chief Clay. I don't believe you're at the last meeting when this was first brought up, but do you recall, I don't recall in my 15 years in this council that we have ever made copies or had to scan or forward to the aldermen all the tickets that were written that go to the first phase of court. Now, Mr. Mr. Flynn and Mr. Sprague in the past 
make a report to the city council on lawsuits that are pending. Correct, Mr. Flynn? Correct. But we've never done this, and I have been request. We've never done it in the past. But I, at least not. You know, I would also like to add that that would be a make work project with immense proportions, and my office at any particular time couldn't even comply with what you uh, are, are requesting, Mr. Hayden. At the, at a particular point in time, I will know that there are 160 cases or whatever the number may be uh, that are pending for my prosecution. I will not necessarily have, at that particular point in time, all of the reports in from the police department to, or, or the copies of the tickets to know the exact nature of each and every individual case. How many of these are housing cases and how many of them have been continued? You know, I, 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 really, I really don't know. I, I don't keep track of those sort of records. Just, just so you understand. Keep, to keep in mind, too, that when we talk about 160 at a particular point in time, that that is that point in time. During the course of the year, we're probably talking about in the excess of a thousand cases, you know, that are processed through my office that are ordinance violations. I get people asking me questions. Well, if you have let, let, let me say this: if you, I, I, you know, if you have specific questions about a specific case, you can call at any time, and I can respond to that. Now, other aldermen have done that over the years about a particular case. And I've always responded. That can be handled, you know. And I've invited you, I think, on, on prior occasions to contact my office at any time on any issue, and I'm more than willing to, to respond to any individual request. But but to to suggest that we try to identify each of those cases and then describe them, uh, it, it's just a, it, it's just an immense request. I don't think you understand or appreciate what you're asking. Mr. Flynn, isn't it also true that we would have to have a staff person or somebody in some authority to look and see, even before we release it to you, if some of this information was considered to be any privacy fact situation, we'd have to didact. I mean, this is an awful, could be, Mike, right? It's so it's possible. So so we're, we're talking about another step that I think will be very expensive for the city, once again, and, and impossible for whether it be the police department or Mike's office, I think it'd be better right now, if you have a specific question, call Mr. <coughs> I'll, 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 I'll nail it down to a little further. I, I would like to know specifically the number of housing cases that have been continued at least once in my ward. And, and, and if you're telling me you can't readily look that up, then we, we have a, a I, I would not system able, up. I, I would not be able to do that. Do you have my warrant, yeah. Bill? No, I mean, that's, that's what we Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. He would know. We don't have about, you know, a, a new computer system. Eventually, maybe we can, maybe we can have better track these. But right now, uh, how, we how, do you, how do you keep track of them when you know they go to court? And, and to be there in court. I prepare a docket, and, and we have those cases listed. Off, and, of, and what, I, what, off of what kind of database or, or system? We, we get notice uh, online from the uh, circuit clerk's office. At that point in time, I know what cases are scheduled and, and what date they're scheduled for trial. And then we request reports and copies of the tickets or the complaints from the police department, and then they come in, and then they, and we prepare a docket for that particular trial date. But as to keeping track of the disposition of the case from if it's continued, I, I simply don't do that. There's no reason to do that, quite frankly. I mean, if you had a, if you had a question about a case, I mean, I could go check that court case and determine if it has been continued in the past, and if so, how many times, or who's request. How often are you going to court? Is it weekly, monthly? We, 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 have, a, we have a large docket once a month. There's normally probably in excess of 100 cases set uh, on each uh, docket day. And, and it's a host of cases. Some of them are housing cases, they're uh, nuisance cases, disorderly conduct cases, dog barking cases. I mean, it's, it's every type of case that could possibly be an ordinance violation. Correct. And the housing cases, 
housing department is already sending these individual aldermen to cases that they're involved with. So I don't yeah, understand I the that. complication of this. I didn't even know that. I'll yield for now, but and I will communicate with you, Mr. Flynn. That would be great. Okay, Miss Lane is a new business. Yes, ma'am. Um, on our ordinance and legal committee, I know we've discussed this before, but why can we not have an attorney there? Just like last Thursday, the crime free housing meeting, you had other commitments. We didn't have an attorney. There was no legal representation. Well, I think as we go into next year's uh, contract with the attorneys, if this council wants to ask or, or seek more time with the attorneys, we can certainly negotiate that when we do the contract with Mr. Flynn. But we have never, has... we have never had, unless there's been a specific request, uh, we have never had uh, our attorneys come to committee meetings. Uh, most of the time, the committee is going back and forth, and then they take the information that's uh, discussed or decided or voted on to Mr. Flynn for his review or his preparation of the resolution ordinance or for his legal opinion. But we have never done this. Now, uh, maybe that's why we've had a pretty good, uh, a pretty good fair rate on our attorney's fees because we have not asked them to go to everything. But if we want to do that, I think we have to negotiate that in the next contract. My next question is, he says we can call him. Does he have an email address that we can contact him with? I mean, yes. Yeah, we've made that available before. Call my office, we'll get that to you. Or call Mike, he'll get it to you. Okay? Just a quick thought on the housing, what she was saying about an attorney being present, because I appreciate you know having an attorney at every committee meeting who could be cumbersome to our pocketbook. Uh, when you assign or ask for volunteers for this housing ordinance to be redrawn, task force, what have you, would you, and this is a tall order, could you attempt to get a legal mind somewhere on the task force that is familiar with the Constitution? That can get I got somebody in mind. Thank you. Your Honor, yes. if, I, if I could address this part about an attorney president. It's been my experience in the different organizations I've been in that uh, attorneys have, you ask them a question and you really put them on the spot because a good attorney will say, I have to research that. I would think that at the meetings I've been with an attorney, there's an awful lot of times where the good ones say, I have to research it and get back to it. So I think we expect that if an attorney sitting there at ordinance, he's going to be saying, yeah, this is exactly right. But I think, are really your best attorneys are when they have to research. And you could, they can't make decisions right off the top of their heads on many legal issues. Yeah, my understanding of the point of asking for an attorney to, it's certainly the, the ordinance committee meeting is there's, a, there's always a staff member at every committee meeting except ordinance which is the city attorney. And most of the things being discussed at that meeting are ordinance that are being proposed our ordinance that were written up by the city attorney and, and, and questions that come up during that meeting could be answered immediately. We can do that. And that's the I'll, point. I'll talk to Mr. Flynn. If you want to ask for one of the attorneys to be present, we'll have to figure out what the additional cost of the contract would be. And I think we ought to consider bringing that back because we've never, we've never in 15 years I've been on this council demanded our city attorneys be at committee meetings. Now, if you, want to, if you want to put that in writing to me that you do, then he and I can have a discussion. I'll bring it back as far as amending, uh, amending that because I don't think it's fair to, they're coming to a lot, believe me, with the, with the case load of the city today and with the amount of business we're doing, I can tell you I'm calling the city attorney more in the last couple of years than we have ever called. And, and the city's just busier and more business, so I think in fairness. And, and, and I respect that you're honored in fairness, but you also got a lot of department heads out there that every time they're at a meeting and, and, and this evening and go into other things, uh, they're depreciating their hour, pay per hour, by because uh, they're, they're. I think we all are. You know, so, uh, you know, just trying to be fair. Okay. Um, anything else? Waterfield claims in the amount of $13,286.62. What's your pleasure? Motion by Alderman Cyber. Do I hear a second? Second by Alderman Heisler. Do I hear discussion? Roll call. Heisler. 